Hello and welcome to Talking Tolkien. It's been a bit of an extended gap between my last video and this one, and though I've got lots of hopefully interesting ideas for the future, I thought it would be fun to return to the Shire in this video, where I'll use the in-game world of Lord of the Rings Online, as I do for my Frodo's Journey videos, to explore the area and look at the history of the Shire, and hopefully highlight some cool stuff you might not be aware of. So sit back and relax as we take a tour of the Shire. We start here in Mikkeldelving, which was the primary town in the Shire, located in the West Farthing. In this town, which is mentioned but never visited in Tolkien's works, is an inn called the Bird and Baby. Now this place is an invention by the game's developers, but it is a reference to the Eagle and Child pub in Oxford, where Tolkien lived and worked for many years. In a back room of the pub, which still stands today, Tolkien used to meet with a local literary discussion group who called themselves the Inklings. Three of the group's most notable members were C.S. Lewis, Owen Barfield and Charles Williams. The group here are talking about Ronald Dwale, which is a reference to J.R.R. Tolkien himself, who was known to family and close friends by his middle name, Ronald. Tolkien's son, Christopher, was also a member of the group and was the final living member of the Inklings. Mickledelving itself was famous for its Matham House, which is a museum where all of the most interesting Hobbit-owned artefacts known as Mathoms were preserved. After the events of The Hobbit, Bilbo lent his mithril shirt to the Matham House until he wore it on his final journey to Rivendell before giving it to Frodo. The mayor, who was effectively in charge of the Shire, lived here and relied on sheriffs throughout the farthings to keep the peace. In reality though, there was little real crime to speak of in the Shire, and the sheriffs were more preoccupied with gathering up stray livestock. Now we mentioned that Mikkeldelving is in the West Farthing. The Shire is split into four farthings, north, south, east and west. As Tolkien was one of the country's foremost authorities on Anglo-Saxon, or Old English language, he knew that farthing was also the Old English word for quarter, and used the name to divide the Shire. Here is the Three Farthing Stone, at a point on the East Road where the East, West and South Farthings come together. It's also virtually the centre point of the Shire. There is a stone some miles north of Oxford known as the Four Shires Stone, marking the historic point where four shires in England met. This would also have very likely been an influence on Tolkien's writing. Hobbiton is a central location in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, as the town where Bilbo and Frodo lived at Bag End. Here's the view from the water looking up towards the hill where Bag End was constructed inside the hill itself. If we compare this with the watercolour that Tolkien himself painted for the original publication of The Hobbit in 1937, we can see this representation closely follows Tolkien's original idea. The mill that we see here was also inspired by Sarhole Mill, on the outskirts of Birmingham, within sight of Tolkien's home as a young child. In the broken borings in the east farthing of the Shire, there's a wood carving on an old tree stump of a proud looking hobbit posing with the decapitated head of a goblin. This famous hobbit was referred to in the Hobbit story as Bandobras Bulrora Took, and was the great great granduncle of Bilbo Baggins. He was notable as being so large a hobbit that he could ride a full sized horse. He fought in the Battle of Greenfields, where goblins from the Misty Mountains invaded the North Farthing, where Bulrora is alleged to have charged the goblin horde with a club, knocking the goblin chieftain Golfinbor's head clean off. The head flew through the air to land in a rabbit hole, winning the battle and inventing the game of golf at the same time. There is a location in the Greenfields called Golfinbor's Hole, where it's likely his head landed. Though there's no mention of a permanent tribute to this famous hobbit in the books, he appears in the game here at the likely site of the battle. On the path that Frodo followed as he left the Shire, we find this fox, which, unlike other foxes in the game, doesn't run away. This seems to be because this is the fox which, uncharacteristically in Lord of the Rings, spots the hobbits sleeping outdoors and wonders about what business they're up to. But he never found out any more about it. When the elves travel to the Grey Havens to leave Middle-earth, they pass through the Shire on their journey. Frodo met a company of elves as he left the Shire and travelled with them for a time, resting at this elf camp near Woodhall. On the western edge of the Shire, we also find the Downs Gate, 
which leads to the Far Downs, which leads to the Tower Hills, where Gilgalad built elven towers that look out over the seas beyond Mithlund, the Grey Havens. That's where Curdan the shipwright rules, but sadly this gate is locked and we can't go through there. On the east side of the Shire, this large stone bridge crosses the river Brandywine. Its stone construction and large scale is likely beyond the skills of the hobbits, in the same way that Roman roads and buildings were beyond the skill of the Anglo-Saxons to recreate. It was a period of time that Tolkien was very familiar with. The bridge was originally constructed by the kings of Arnor before hobbits settled in the area known as the Shire, though a condition of them settling here was that they maintain the bridge and allow all travellers to cross, which they did long after the kings of Arnor had faded. This is also where Aragorn, after he had been crowned King Alessar, rode to meet the hobbits in the Fourth Age. He would not ride further into the Shire as he had forbidden men to enter the land in order to preserve the safety of all hobbits. While we're talking about the Fourth Age, King Alessar later decreed that Buckland, which had sat on the eastern edge of the Shire, was to become officially part of the Shire. It's in Buckland where we can find Crick Hollow, which is the house that Frodo had bought and declared his intention to leave Hobbiton and retire here, while in reality he was going to take the ring to Rivendell. So here we can see Crick Hollow after the Black Riders had tracked him here with his friend Fatty Bolger, who narrowly escaped the Riders. The cloak they left here had belonged to Frodo. So that's it for these stories of the Shire. I've deliberately left a couple of landmarks out that don't appear in the books, like the troll statue in the bog, but if there's anything else you think I've missed, please comment below and let me know. Apart from that, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Talking Tolkien, where you'll find more videos about this and all manner of Tolkien-related matters. Once again, thanks for watching Talking Tolkien.